Hello, everyone. You are welcome that the smoky smell in here was a little bit was free of charge. Okay, it came with uh, actually coming to this talk. So thank you for that. I'm here to tell you a little bit about Forge Biologics. For those of you that know about us, we are a genetic medicine uh, CDMO with uh, with one clinical stage asset that's been really a, a fantastic proof point for a lot of the things that we've done at Forge. It's been a we're not going to talk about that today, but it's really been helpful to use. Um, as we've developed our own AAV gene therapy to be able to use our cell line and our path and our process, the facility um, it helps us because we're able to tell a lot of clients to say, well, we did our own things first and here's the feedback we got from the FDA or the EMA at scientific advice meetings or pre-IND or IND guidance. So um, by the numbers, we do have 20 GMP suites. Um, we have scales from one to 1,000 and have two 5,000 liters in suite in GMP suite now that are enduring, uh, going through scale up. Um, currently have the capacity of, for about 200,000 liters um, per year and a, a little over 300 employees to date. I think one of the things that really stands out that differentiates Forge from uh, a number of different groups that are out there is that the leadership team has over 200 years worth of experience, hands-on experience in gene and cell therapy products. From David Dismuke, the CTO, um, he uh, helped with the, um, when he was at Bamboo, that led to the Pfizer buyout, led all of the manufacturing at Voyager for a number of years, and also at, uh, at Stride Bio. John Mislowski, long career at Wyeth and Merck, was the CEO of Fibrocell and uh, Castle Creek for a while. Jason Eichholz uh, helped lead a lot of the manufacturing transitions at Nationwide Children's Hospital, and on. So lots of great hands-on experience. It's been very helpful for a number of groups to listen to. You know, we're really trying to improve our accessibility for many different clients, and really at the end of the day, what we're talking about is accessibility for patients, right? So, you know, by doing that, we're trying to scale out by increasing the number of upstream and uh, downstream GMP suites. We have a, uh, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, since an AAV manufacturing upstream takes longer than downstream, so we have an offset, so there's more upstream suites than downstream. And by scaling up, again, we're trying to get to 5,000 liter bioreactors, and currently have five 1,000 um, liter bioreactors up and in GMP. Our process improvement from our cell line to our single use systems um, are really uh, helpful for clients to understand and move through our cl critical process parameters. And we're also helping many clients do molecular improvement and also have a lot of molecular improvement on our own from ad helper plasmids to rep cap plasmids. You know, we're trying to make sure that uh, when they go into triple transfections that, you know, really you get efficient and high yielding uh, AAV and a lot of enhanced analytics. And you'll see a couple of fun things about that later. Here's a picture um, giving a good diagram of, of really the hearth, our 200,000 square foot uh, facility in Columbus, Ohio, and I get the question all the time, why Columbus? Well, I can build for about a tenth of the price per square foot than Boston. That's one reason. So. You know, we had four GMP suites in the top uh, left corner. We started bringing in revenue in 2021, that fantastic R uh, name. We have 16 more suites that were built out and finished in 20, early or late 2022. And we do have some ability to do future expansion, a 25,000 square foot GMP warehouse, plenty of room in its own uh, area in the facility to do downstream purification and plasma, DNA, and filling. So we can take any program from start to finish, do plasma on the front end, AAV, and do um, manual, semi-automated, or automated fill finish. And really, our, our process development and GMP scale have really enabled um, us to drive forward through a, to a commercially viable platform. So here you'll see in our upstream, you can go really, really small scale. And some, um, what actually often doesn't get talked about a lot is the actual scale down. Um, some groups want to come in and be able to say, well, I've got a novel capsid. And can we work through a lot of uh, parameters to see which one might work best? Um, you can do one to 10 liters, up to uh, 200, 500 liters in process development, and again, up to 5,000 liters in, um, in GMP. And then same thing downstream, you know, where we're looking through large uh, chrome systems, including um, our largest, which can do about 900 liters an hour. So uh, again, commercially relevant platforms. And when we think about how you've taken uh, the cell line, we're all familiar with the HEK293 cell line. Um, many of us have worked with problematic uh, cell lines that have not been able to be fully commercializable because their background, their traceability has been limited. So we went back, we derived a clone from the beginning, um, and actually has full traceability. You can take this all the way through to commercial. Um, so just using, when looking at our ignition cell line, uh, you can use this again very early in research grade. You can use it all the way up through GMP. And really, uh, when we start looking at uh, total yield, 
yields as we scale up, we actually see an increase in uh, crude lice seed at this point too. So you want to start with the end in mind. Um, again, if uh, you are just uh, started an AAV program and you're like, well, I need some manufacturing, but I'm also thinking about clinical, you can use our research grade, which is called Blaze Production. Um, it's manufacturing leverages all of the platform assets, including our analytics. You can do full traceability for the cells and through our ad helper plasmid, which generally produces two to three fold more uh, fulls, and it's much safer because it's smaller, doesn't have any of the challenges than some of the ad plasmids that are out there. We use animal-free components, single-use materials upstream and downstream, and we actually already have a DMF that's on file with the FDA. Importantly, we actually do have QP declaration as well, so if you want to make um, material at Forge, you can take it to Europe. Not all the groups have that. And um, while we are still a little bit in the Burger King phase where, you know, you make it your way, uh, we're trying to move more to the McDonald's way, which is here's your quarter pounder. But at the same point, um, you know, every program is just a little bit bespoke. More and more people are moving to tr as much platform as possible, generally speaking, a triple transfection. Um, but as you move into your downstream, you're looking for commercially viable bespoke affinity chromatography. And so while you can do cesium chloride, we're also looking for anion exchange. And our platform, coupled with client-specific processes, though, results in increased productivity. And while this is a bit of an eye chart to read, you know, the more things that you work with with Forge, the better your productivity. And that's really what the y-axis is showing. You see a lot of increase the more that you work within the platform. So each of the platform can adapt to each client's unique construct. Um, and we see a lot of commonly requested studies from affinity chromatography. We've done a lot of KLA studies. I'm trying to do optimization of different transfections. So by taking that time, this is where you want to go to try to um, help maximize your yields, which everybody loves. And really, at the end, uh, we have 25 assays for in-house efficient acceleration. So some of the ones to point out, we do have our own RCAV testing here in the facility. So sometimes if you have to go outside to an external CRO, it's going to be six months and $150,000 before you can have your product released. This is a bit shorter. Um, we also have identity by DNA sequencing, um, so NGS is in-house. We also have capsid identity as well for mass spec. So again, these are a number of the things that the FDA and the EMA are looking for from, um, you know, from what to how you're going to release your AV. We do have customizable drug uh, product fill. So you can see here one of the Watson Marlowe's. Um, this is an, uh, actually something we have in a hood, so it's semi-automated. Um, we actually have also fully automated the Cytiva microcell, and we'll be opening that to a number of different groups um, to be able to use. It's an ISO closed five, or ISO five closed isolator. Um, you can do one to roughly 1,200 uh, units per eight hours, and you can do custom fill. So, and also from the, uh, for the, some, uh, from the Watson Marlowe, varied batch size, one to 600 units in eight hours. So again, some clients more and more are appreciating the semi-automated fill operation. And, you know, as we think about, you know, thoughtful integration of analytics and automation, you know, we had a question on one of the panels earlier today about how are you doing AI? And while we actually, we made the comment that we actually had chat CPT actually try to write an SOP, it didn't go that well, so we're pretty safe for now. Um, but I guess time will tell because that's always learning. You know, but we do have a lot of these um, advanced automation, right? So we're trying to make sure that we, time is really the, the enemy for all of us, for all of our patients. So trying to find ways to speed up our release assays. So we do multi-parallel viral reactors. We can do the TCAN, which is liquid, liquid handling, um, and next-gen sequencers all at once at the same time. So, you know, again, as we continue to improve data integrity, you know, you're trying to enable faster anal analytics also through cloud-based solutions. So. Um, an exciting part of the future um, as we try to continue to move through faster for commercialization of gene therapies. And right now, um, we are about to sign our 40th client, you know, and that's working on over 70 gene therapy programs, all AAV. Um, when we think about how our technology is leveraged by most clients, 95% of them are using our HEK293 cell line. So that's available for licensing. Um, around 80% of them are using Forge's P. Ember ad helper plasmid. Um, again, when you, we have some data that we can share, and we've shared before, that when measuring that against some of the current is uh, much better than the standard. standard. 
Uh, we do have a variety of ways that we look at clients through client segmentation. You know, we partner with a range of AAV clients and plasma clients, predominantly private biotech, but you know, a good segment of public biotech as well. And this pie chart would flip if you looked at the dollars between public and private, so just not too much of a surprise. And we've also worked with a ton of serotypes. So pretty much if you have a, an AAV capsid, whether it's novel or one of the more traditional ones, the ignition platform has been used. And when we look at you know, really the number of batches that we've made in just the past like 12 to 15 months, we've made about 240 batches across many different serotypes. We've made 100, over 150 lots of blaze and research grade material um, and 16 GMP lots. That's basically one GMP lot a month. So um, while PD has been the major focus for many clients because it takes a lot of time, you want to go through PD to make sure that you know, you, by the time you get to GMP, your process is well defined. So, and when we think about the spotlight on GMP, about half of them have been 1,000 liter GMP lots, you know, and also 50 and 500s as well. So we can help meet a lot of different needs uh, for those clients looking for to make a successful AV program. And short and sweet, because I know that I'm the one probably standing in front of you uh, for happy hour. So, but if anybody has any questions, uh, by all means, I can uh, take some questions at the end. Thank you.